you know. She was uh, not telling the full story, was she? <laughs> no, she was telling it all in favor of Japan like they there was no chance of us winning the war when all the time we were, were winning. winning. Yeah. Yeah. So Tokyo Rose was a radio per- yeah, she, yeah. radio person in Japan. Us, yeah. And you could pick her up from your ship. Your okay. radio, yeah. From radio See, we had Japan. four hours on and four hours off duty and then radio when the four hours when they up, they'd come down and bring us up to date on stuff. Huh. And so how often was she, could you, so was she Japanese? I, Tokyo she could speak English real good. I'm not sure. I think, I think they hung her with the, I put her in prison with the, uh, the emperor, Afterwards. you know, they hung him. Okay. Gee, I didn't know that. Yeah. I didn't either. Yeah, they hadn't. Where were you when the, when they dropped the atom bomb on you? I was at home. Okay. On my honeymoon. <laughs> <laughs> didn't think you didn't have to go that. back. Huh? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I went back. My brother was in the boot camp, and he was coming in, and I stayed an extra day home so I could see him. I hadn't seen him in over three years. And when I reported back, I was 24 hours, so... Uh, he said, you know, no liberty for seven days. Well, I was broke, didn't have no money. <laughs> didn't bother me much. But then I got to go to Seattle. So you went back to Seattle? Yeah. Yeah, I had a report back. And so then how long did you have to stay? I was, well, then when it ended, uh, they filled your papers out, and they sent me to Memphis to be discharged. And they told me um, when they talked, they tried to talk me into re-enlisting. And they said, when you get to Memphis, you report your wound. And said, uh, they'll, uh, you'll probably get some disability. Well, I got to Memphis, and all of us got over, and we got over there, and, and They'd already schooled those <laughs> recruiters. That fellow said, now if you want to go home tomorrow, get in this line. <laughs> but if you're going to file for disability, get over here in this line, you may be, that was in November, you may be here till after Thanksgiving. That was the first November. <laughs> uh, oh, I jumped over and they told me when I got to uh, Greenville, I, Greenville where I, and they said, when you get to Greenville, go to Johnson City. To, VA and file for disability on your knee because there's shrapnel in there. And I come home and uh, my dad wanted me to go in business with him. And uh, so I started working and I didn't, I thought, well, the chlorine broke out and all that was the government and use every penny they get. So I didn't even file till after I retired. And I went over there. And you know what that fella told me? I forget who was president in 86. He said, you should have come in here when Lyndon Johnson was here. We give them pensions to everybody. I said, now we don't give them to nobody unless they nearly dead. <laughs> so I didn't. <laughs> uh, I seen Jimmy Quill and he said, I'll fix something for you. And he went over and examined me. So how did the duties work like with night watch and people, or did some people stay up at night and... Yeah, we'd have four hours on and four hours off. I mean, four hours. And then if you had a 12 to 4 watch, uh, our ship was so small, they didn't have a uh, bakery department, so he had to do the baking at night. And he'd bake bread at night, and he was a good man. So when he'd get his bread made, he'd come around about 3 o'clock in the morning and bring us hot bread and butter, boiling coffee. That was really... And then when we'd have uh, some more things, I mean, like we'd have uh, supplies coming aboard, food and all that. Well, <clears throat> your papa and all them, of course, they were officers and they got the first pick. And they'd pick all the 
tiny upon you, but great fruit. Well, we had orders from a, a gun captain that if you everybody turned in, the, just wasn't the uh, the kitchen help. Everybody had to help unload the ship. <laughs> they said if you get a chance to throw a case, and we'd throw a case of pineapple and some of them covered up with a life jacket, and then that night we did it. And then during the 12 4 watch, we'd open up a gallon can. We'd have pineapple to pull back and it. That's so right. Uh, that was kind of the, the way the Navy done things, that we won the war. Yeah. That's reminiscent of the movie uh, Mutiny on the Bounty when, when Captain Quigg accused yeah. people of stealing the strawberries. Or... Yeah, and, uh, well, I think uh, when uh, they relieved Foster. Uh, yeah, tell him who Foster was. He was, uh, he relieved them. Um, here, oh, here, let me pass this around. Uh, this is from. Uh, Captain Engel, he was the first uh, captain, and then he they put him in charge of call the fleet. There's about six DBs in a division, and he's overall in the one another. And Foster moved up, and that's when uh, Al moved up to executive officer. But when uh, Foster was, he made eight or ten, fifteen advancements. Third class, first class, by the end of the month he'd, he'd knock about half of them off. And when he had a, he got transferred, we had a party, and, and the officers even had a party to get with him. But he, didn't know, he didn't like nobody. The, he was just, I reckon, mad at the world because he was in the war. And so then, when did he? I moved up to executive. It's, it's when he moved up. When Foster left? Yeah. Okay. So then who was the new captain? I forget the name right now. It's a little bit true. But, uh, yeah, I think if your daddy would have took the exam, he'd have moved up to captain, but he was kind of happy where he was. And he was only, guys, you were... 18, 19, 20, and in yeah. 1943, my father was, just, he was born, he was 26 that year. Yeah, well, well I, I turned 90 this year, so I figured he'd be about 95 or 6. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but if you look, he was, there, you see there, I got in there, did you see where what your fat Paul started that company and all that. And there's, I, and during the 40s and 50s, there wasn't no TV. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> baseball, softball, and basketball. I didn't have no trouble getting jobs because I was a good athlete. And there's some of the teams I was on there to bat. Magnavox. <laughs> That is, that's Daddy's obituary over there. Mm -hmm. And these are the reunions, the ship's reunions. Mm -hmm. Can you think, can you all think of any other any questions? You like that? What was it like when you were young? What? What was it like when you were young? Well, it, it was a little rougher than it is now, but... <coughs> The world don't look any safer now than it did back then, I'm afraid. <clears throat> I just hope we can, people find out you're supposed to love your fellow man instead of trying to destroy it. Yeah, it's tough, isn't it? Do you, you want to ask a more specific question? Were you curious about what he ate when he was a boy or the games they played or? We got to, when we, it, we went to Guam, and with our softball team, we'd go, they'd <coughs> fix us a team, and we'd get to go and shores, and went, and uh, <coughs> Pee Wee Reese was in charge of recreation in Guam, 
uh, he was shortstop for the Brooklyn Dodgers. Uh, so we had over, we thought we'd be playing Americans, and he put the uh, Guam ball. But all they, that's all they had to do. They played ball day and night. Because, you know, the U.S. fed them, and there wasn't mm -hmm. nothing they could do. So they had a good team, and we played them, and then we'd have a game or two of our own time or two, and we got to go ashore on some of them islands. So, you mentioned the invasion of Japan, which didn't happen because we bombed, we dropped yeah. the atomic bomb. But did you knew that there were plans for an invasion? Yeah, I didn't they, know well, that. they know we know something was up because they was remodeling and rebuilding the ship. All of the ship. So you just thought it was you all were going to yeah. invade Japan. Well one thing it's funny as being that I'm the only one went back aboard the man up, <clears throat> the radar would for the uh, <clears throat> that suicide plane some way damaged, knocked the radar out. And some of my buddies come to visit me on the hospital. They said, we're going to the States. Well, <laughs> I started yakking. I read that doctor said, I'll tell you when you're ready to go back aboard. And I kept a fussing with him. One day he said, Kelly, I'm going to put you on light duty and let you go back aboard the ship. And you know what happened? Right. Being a submarine, our sonar, we could still pick up. So they put us on another uh, escort duty back to Okinawa. And I thought, oh, me and my big mouth, I'm going to get myself killed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I got after them boys and tell them why. But, uh, but uh, of course, then they had some more that had radar for aircraft, but we, all we could do was just go for a submarine. Well, tell, you know, I never really understood when Pop used to say he was on a destroyer escort. Is that what you call it? So you escorted other ships, yeah. but what did you, were you supposed to keep the big ships safe? Yeah. Okay, but you were a lot smaller well, than the big ships. Well, so. yeah, but on submarines and stuff, we, oh. we could move faster than the bigger ships. Okay. The so, so how would you know if there were submarines? Well, on that sonar, uh, had it down and, and drop it down so far and okay. along the ship and it in that way. Oh, and that's how you did. Well, quite a few times we'd go to battle station and it'd be such big schools of fish would set it off. Oh, okay. I, mean, I mean, you know, it was that sensitive. A great big, I guess, five, six hundred fish or something uh, all together. And it, so how could you tell if it was a school of fish or a submarine? Well, after we'd fall, they'd fall in a while and they'd keep track of it. And I reckon it kind of break out. And then they'd say, <clears throat> I was stationed over over go back to quarters and we'd get to go back down. Right, so, uh, did you actually participate in any battles, or were you just an escort? Or did you yeah, we, escort? what I say, we, uh, it tell uh, we were in Marshall Island, Oakland, uh, Kwajalein, and then the Philippines, and then Guam, and Saipan, and then Okinawa. What was it like being in those? Well, uh, we escort them in and then we'd back up and stay on picket duty they say and watch for submarines that no submarines would get in our big ships. And that's what we were doing when we got hit. We uh, trying to protect they had another thing was was sad in a way the planes what's called IFF identification. In other words, there's some way they supposed to have something on and tell them that they were <coughs> they was a friendly aircraft. And we was in, uh, they loading us up with supplies to take out, back out to one of the ships out there. And they found dinner for us to everybody. And we went out, of course we didn't open fire because the bigger guns 
they just act act everywhere, and that plane was it it all kind of flips and flops, and they finally knocked him down. And then the captain of the carrier of the battleship, he said, Folks, you done a good job. The only thing was it was one of ours. His IFF wasn't working. So, you know, that was, I don't know if he failed to turn it on or it just didn't work. I don't know, but I felt sorry because I mean that fella. You see them bust the smoke. He just was diving and doing everything in the world. When, how many escorts would, how many would be in the whole thing? Did you well, have like a Maybe war? two or three, uh, and usually one destroyer and two or three destroyer escorts. Okay. The destroyer could uh, go about up to maybe 25 knots, where our ship 22 was the fastest we could go, but uh, the cargo ships and then just about 10 knots a half. Okay. So that give us a chance to move around more and cover more territory in case submarines was around. But you have all the space, I thought a lot of it. And when you, had you ever shot a gun before, before you... Nothing would, like that, I just shot guns. And were they like, big guns? Yeah, they were three inch fifty and the shell weighed 25 pounds. Ooh. And how many, how many guns did you have set up on the... We had three, uh, seven, uh, three inch fifty, one more, like half that we was on that day, and then a, two more at the front, and then we had a kind of act act gun, a machine gun, and then I had about, I don't know, about eight, 20 millimeters. And then we mounted, they mounted 150. They took off a, a ship that was sunk. Before it went down, they took a, one of the guns off and fixed it back on the aft of our ship. Well, so did you have them on both sides of the ship? Yeah. And at the back? The, the three inch fifties and one point one, they, you could rotate them uh, on like whichever direction you want. They get over it. And so there was a crew at all the guns yeah. all the time? Yeah. Well, we you know or only. When, when the battle stations, they, everything was, but when we just uh, sailing, they would be. Uh, one three inch fifty and two or three twenty millimeters, mm -hmm. and then we had they put what's called a hedgehog. I, I don't. They, it wasn't on our ship. It's invented afterwards. It was I don't know about fifteen little bombs like, and then we we sunk one sub. We got credit for sinking one sub. We'd, they'd fire them things and they'd make a circle and they'd go down. And if one of them exploded, that shot would send all of them. In other words, all 12, I believe it was 12 or 15, I forget now. And that would be it. But the funny part, I mean the good part of it, we had orders at the one of them little islands out from. Uh, Philippines or Guam, one of them, we had order to go and, and do picking just us and a destroyer and, and uh, uh, I forget what another kind of ship. And that, uh, they broke down the Japanese code and they let us know that there was a submarine coming in with supply and they're going to pick up all the officers on that island. And so all we had to do was wait there a day or two to we just circle around. And every once in a while they on the island and if you got in too close they hit a destroyer. Uh, they'd fire at you. Most of the time we'd stay out where the shell wouldn't reach it. But we uh, sunk that but they had all we had to do is wait to give us 
direction board's coming from and everything. I didn't realize that the intelligence or the capability was that good that long ago. Yeah. Nowadays, they can put point just about anything. Yeah. But they broke the code and, and whatever. We know everything that's going on. <clears throat> so anything else I can help you with? Did you read this letter about your grandma there? Coming to... Maybe, Allison, maybe you could did you take a picture yeah. of Sadie Slider. I'll do that in a minute. And you went to when, Carrie? Then. The first one I went to was in 94 after Daddy died. And it was in Tampa with, forget his name, I can see his face. And um, it was, they did a service in memory of my daddy. I think on the back of that tells all of her, or there one. That we can There's use. the letter. And Jack, could we make a copy of Sadie's letter? Yeah. Just take I it think that was, and she had such a pretty handwriting. Well, I can go in and get it for you. We can ask him to do that. I'm trying to think. Can anybody else think of questions? You know, uh -huh. what, Sam, if you got a number? How would you know if the submarine sunk? If someone what? If, if the, the submarine, submarine sunk. How would you know you got the submarine? And that it was shot it. And that it was Well when we had a say solar system and send out waves and if we get the sub it bounce back and they'd tell us what they'd pinpoint and then we'd get fallout so far and they'd start following depth charges. We we done that quite often but like, we never did think one but the one and we sunk up uh Fish, uh, fishermen boat, what they are doing, they was out there like they was fishing, but they had radio equipment, and they was sending messages to Japan, in, to Japan mm -hmm. on the island there, of where we was and everything, so we had ordered the sink. And so you did? Were you part of shooting that one down, or? Mm, well, it was uh, a fishing boat there, and fishing, we had ordered yeah. to sink it. Right, you say you had orders to, so did, were you involved in shooting it down or was it a pretty simple... Uh, well, we just fired down. So pretty easy, I guess. Not, yeah, broke yeah. Up. And then we went out once, uh, uh, PBY uh, was a seaplane, and they, they were good about seeing, they could see, uh, they could fly low, and where the water was clear around the island, they could see subs. Well, they was forced down, and they had engine trouble, and so uh, we had orders to go out and pick them up and bring the plane in if we could. Well, the water was rough, and we got the crew aboard, and they hooked onto the plane, and we tried to drop them when it it would the whole nose and everything go underwater like plane. So we got ordered to destroy it. So we put it off and had firing practice, sinking one of our own plane. And I got the, the captain of that plane, he sent about two years ago, I got a picture of him thanking me and all of that. He sent one to everybody. I figured your daddy got mm -hmm. one probably. I don't know. He may, may have got the one that thought was alive. Mm. He just sent him. He retired out of the Navy. And he was, uh, do, do you have a picture of you with my daddy in the scrapbook anywhere? Uh, when y'all was so young? No, I don't guess I do. Because back then there wasn't many pictures taken. Nobody would allow a camera or anything. Mm -hmm. And thought about that. Yeah. So you said a lot about uh, about Pop. Do you have any other just final comments about how you knew him and what he did? And because well, of course most said, of these kids don't, you know. Uh, some of the officers would just, you know, they, they know they're officers. But you, you know, Grandpa 
being when he told you something, he told it no matter what. You appreciate it. You get he didn't he just told it in a nice way and you better do it that way. So a few times he had like got to he saw it before well, got to his always in trouble. The guy that the guy that he stole his gun when he was sleeping. Yeah. 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 I did we went to uh the law set in San Diego and him and another boy. Went yeah, to Hollywood. Back they went to Hollywood mm -hmm. and uh, thought said, I'm going up there and getting the movies. <laughs> and, uh, they didn't come back for to come find out uh when he didn't report back. The skipper sent in uh, the uh, AOL after without me. And the Marines got him and put him and, and uh, Phil and Jim in the brig. And, and so uh, oh. Phil and Jim come back, he said, I want to take mm -hmm. He said, I learned I don't want to travel with cotton. Mm -hmm. And it's that Marine come around and they set their shoes in there and put shoe polish in brush and a rag said I want them shoes to shine. But Phil and Jim said I I worked on mine, they had shine. He went over to Godkin and Godkin hadn't touched. He said, I wasn't gonna shine their damn shoes and like that, you know. And he said in a few minutes they come in and locked the door and they took Godkin out. And they said I didn't say no more to him, but said when he come back he got on that brush, start shining them shoes. He said they give him a good whip now. There go. <laughs> so he he had to learn the hard way. <coughs> the boys would listen to your mom and your girls. When your mom and daddy says something, you better. We may have a a marine checking on you. Well, I remember Herman, one of your shipmates, talking about how the. Uh, the captain had told him he could he could get off the ship whenever they were in port and then when the time came the captain said no you can't you're not going anywhere and that my daddy talked to the captain and said now that's not right you I promised him think. this and you've got to stick with yeah. it and that that's he would have a thing for the men your daddy was was really a fine officer you know, at Jack, at the first reunion they had, when Daddy got the letter, he read it and he handed it to Mother and he said, I'm, I can't go to this. And Mother said, why not? And he said, none of those men are going to want to see me because I was the exec and I had to carry out the captain's orders. And the captain sometimes was... Yeah. was mean. So um, mother said, well fine, you stay here and I'll go without you because I think all those men help bring you back safe to me. So. Yeah. yeah he, like I say, he, he, he give orders in a nice way. He didn't, like the captain, he just, it's going to be done this way and no other way. Let's get a picture behind Jack. Can y'all stand up there with Jack? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Him. You don't need to stand. Just you need to sit right there and let Allison. You can go stand behind him. Yeah. Or you want a bit yet? Sure. You can get behind him. Yeah, you're the tall one. Come over stay here. Stay the same. Yes, stay yeah, the same. Come here. Where's that other one? You come over here. Sam, right? get on the other side. Or Sylvia. Here we go. Now we got you get, uh, Sylvia right. and Peter in the back. All right. Now. Uh, let's see, Nick, you don't need to get somewhere. There we go. There we go. I'm going to zoom in a little bit and get a little bit better picture of her full face. No fake smiles to smile. Okay. 